Greetings! Today we're going to look at common collector amplifier configuration. This is also known as an emitter follower, or more generically as a voltage follower. There's a handful of characteristics uh, common to all voltage followers. These circuits have a voltage gain of 1, so they're referred to as buffers. It's a non-inverting gain. They typically have a low output impedance and a high input impedance. So this makes them very good at matching. In other words, if I have something with a high source impedance and it's trying to drive a low load impedance, we can lose a lot on that impedance mismatch. So I want something to have minimal load on the driving source, which would require a high input impedance. And if the load impedance is low, then the output impedance of this amplifier will also have to be low. So you might be wondering, hey, the gain is 1. What the heck use is an amplifier with a gain of 1? So it's not really a point of voltage gain. In fact, we will get power gain out of it, which is the product of voltage gain and current gain. But more importantly, it's set up to avoid loss. Okay, so it's sort of the, the old, um, you know, uh, ounce of, of prevention is worth a pound of cure, or maybe a, a gram is worth a kilogram, whatever. So we start off with um, similar kind of biasing situations. In other words, we could use uh, a voltage divider bias. We could use a two-supply emitter bias. I'm going to go with the latter for no particular reason. We could use either one. So we'll start with our source. And this will be coupled in. Base resistor. Here's our transistor. Now it turns out because this is common collector, so the collector is the common between the input and output, we don't need a collector resistor. We just bring this right up to the power supply. Okay, And off the emitter, we have a single biasing resistor. This goes down, in this case, to the negative VEE. And the load is going to be connected off the emitter. All right, so that's the real obvious difference. Now, you can see compared to some previous circuits with common emitter amplifiers, this is a little bit simpler. There are fewer components. Let's label a few things, right? We've got a, a base resistor over here, an emitter resistor for biasing here, and a load RL. Okay. Um, same process as before with common emitter amplifier. The first thing we would have to do is find <clears throat> the uh, R prime E value. So you might remember R prime E. 26 millivolts over IE. All right, so we would go through, in this case, um, if we had a, uh, a circuit with uh, a decent design where we could approximate um, that the base voltage was about zero volts, right? We can usually say that when the base resistor is about the same size or smaller than RE. Um, base voltage winds up being 0 volts DC, the emitter will be around minus 0.7, and the difference between that and VEE will drop on RE, that will establish our emitter current, and we could just plug that into this equation and find out the value of our prime E. All right. Now, let's go and find the AC equivalent. So the first thing is, we want to take care of these capacitors. So for the AC equivalent, these caps are going to be shorted, and because again we're doing a superposition, we replace the other source, which is the DC power source, with its ideal internal resistance, which would be a short, and that would bring that back to ground. Okay, so we have our VN over here, driving the base of this, and the output now is on the emitter rather than on the collector. So let's make our AC version of this, AC simplification. So here's our input. Input cap is shorted. Here's the RV value. Now, if this was a voltage divider, that would be two resistors, the R1 and the R2. Now we come into the uh, base terminal of the resistor of the transistor. So we have an R prime E coming down here. And then we have um, an RE, but that winds up in parallel with the RL. Okay, now I'm going to draw that as two separate things. Here's the RE. And then this uh, power supply, of course, is going to go back to ground. 
Oops, just like it did on the collector power supply. All right. And then off this point, we also have the RL because this cap is shorted. So this parallel combo, RE uh, and parallel, excuse me, with RL, we can either call that the load, AC load RL, or we could call it the AC value of RE, whatever floats your boat. And then off here we have our current source, and that just goes back to ground. So the value of that current source, IC, is equal to beta times IB. Right? Great. Okay. Now, we have the same three things we're interested in, input impedance, output impedance, and the voltage gain. The gain in this is particularly uh, of interest. Uh, let's grab the, the Z in, because basically there really is no change compared to a normal uh, common emitter amplifier. We would look in this way. This is our Zn. And we would say that Zn is equal to this biasing resistor in parallel with the impedance seen looking into the base, the old Zn base. Now, if you look at this circuit, you realize that the Zn base winds up being identical, at least as far as the formula is concerned, to the basic uh, common emitter amplifier. All right? You still have the R prime E, and instead of you know, the AC value of R, R E being one resistor, you have a parallel combo, but it still is, in the AC case, one equivalent resistor. Z in base would be VB over IB, all right? the base voltage divided by the uh, base current. And VB is this voltage, which would be the current through it, which is the AC emitter current, right? IE, which happens to equal IC virtually. So I can just say, well, all right, IE is approximately equal to IC, and IC is equal to beta times IB. All right. And um, that is going to be multiplied by the resistance we have, our prime E plus... R E, extend that a little bit, and that's divided by I B. So those I Bs cancel, and we wind up with, as I said, the exact same equation we had before. All right? Z in base is beta R prime E plus R E. So unlike a common emitter amplifier, the value of the load impedance actually affects the input impedance of the amplifier. Right? In the common emitter amplifier, that doesn't happen. All right, so we've got that. Now, like I said, the big thing here is, is uh, talking about the gain. You know, How do I get this voltage gain of one? Well, the voltage gain, as always, is gonna be the output voltage divided by the input voltage. Okay, so what's my output voltage? Well, it's to drop across this RL, right? The little RL. Um, Again, if we do this in a loaded situation, I'll use little rl, okay? Um, what do I have in terms of uh, an Ohm's law equivalent there? Well, I've got little rl times the current through this, which would be the AC current, right? IE, which again, approximately equal to beta times IB, okay? So that's my V out. Now, importantly, note the polarity here. For a positive input polarity, this current's flowing down and we're going to have this kind of polarity at the load. In other words, positive to positive. So unlike the common emitter amplifier, this does not invert the signal, right? If we have an input polarity that looks like this, then the output polarity over here is also going to look like that. Okay? Beauty. So it follows the input, hence the term emitter follower or voltage follower, right? As the input changes, the output changes perfectly in sync with it, okay? All right, anyway, back to our, uh, back to our equation over here. Um, the V out we said um, was our current times the resistance, total resistance. Um, and then the input was similar. Um, we wind up with uh, IC times little rl over here, and then IC times the whole thing, 
r prime e plus r l or r e, whatever you want to call it. I'll tell you what, we'll just call it r e. I'm going to call it r e because that makes it look an awful lot like another equation. You can think of this as sort of your generic equation for your amplifiers. You get a load divided by r prime e plus r e. Um, and a follower, RL, happens to be this little RE. In the case of um, a common emitter amplifier, it's a negative RC, right? The, the signal's coming off the collector, so we use RC. In this case, the signal's coming off the emitter, so we use RE, all right? So if you prefer, you could just write that as RE over R prime E plus RE. And it should be obvious from this equation, this value can't be more than one, right? Typically, RE is going to be a lot bigger than R prime E, and the gain will approach unity, right? It'll approach unity, although it won't be exactly equal to. So a good buffer, a good follower, you know, we'll get like 0.99 or something like that on here, all right? All right, the third and final element is the output impedance. This is supposed to give us a small output impedance. So I want to basically look back in this way. In other words, what does the load see? Now remember on the common emitter amplifier, the output impedance is probably a pretty high number. It's whatever the collector biasing resistor is. Here, eh, maybe not so much, okay? Looking back in here, what we're going to see, uh, so this would be your Z out, is going to be this RE, that biasing resistor, and that's going to be in parallel with the impedance looking back up into the emitter. Okay, so just as we have a, uh, a Z in base, I'm going to call that Z into the emitter. Okay, what am I seeing looking back into the emitter? So what the heck is that? I'll take a look at the model. What do we see? First thing I see is the R prime E. All right. Now that's going to be in series with whatever's coming out this way. Now this way we have um, this current source, which ideally the internal impedance of the current source would be infinity, so we can kind of forget about this part of it. Right? But we also have what's out here. Okay, well what the heck is out there? So again, I'm kind of like looking out that way now. Well you see the RB, and the RB is in parallel with uh, this voltage source. We didn't draw it on here, but, you know, all sources, all real-world sources have to have some kind of internal impedance. It might be small enough to ignore, you know, for our gains and so forth, but it has to exist. So we see this combined impedance. Let's call that RS for source impedance. So I'm going to see this RS in parallel with RB, all right? That's what this combo is back out here in the base. Now, you might be tempted to say, oh, so that's R prime E plus the parallel combo of RS and RB, right? whatever this biasing combo happens to work out to. Um, it might appear that way, but you have to remember you're looking at circuits that have different currents. So the current out here is emitter current. The current back here is base current. This current is roughly beta times smaller than this current. And that has an effect on this. Okay? If we look at this, we realize, all right, you know, I'm going to have to sort of match those currents, keep everything on a sort of a, a even playing field. Well, base current is basically emitter current divided by beta, right? Good approximation, which means that this impedance, guess what, is also divided by beta. One way of remembering this is that when you're sitting out here in the base, whatever is in the emitter, that impedance is multiplied up by beta, right? Because out here, the current is beta times bigger. You're sitting back in the base, whatever is in the emitter, that current's beta times bigger. So this gets multiplied up by beta. Well, when you're on the other side of the fence, when you're in the emitter and you're looking back into the base, whatever is in the base is decreased by beta, all right? So this is what our Z in emitter winds up being. With typical values, this is going to be a small number, all right? You know. Um, if we have a modest source impedance, for example, in the lab, 
your source impedance is going to be 50 ohms. Okay, 50 in parallel with maybe a few K for a biasing resistor. Well, there's 50 ohms. Now divide that by a beta. Beta 100, 150, 200. Well, you're probably looking at a fraction of an ohm for this piece. And then you just have your R prime E. All right. Now, granted, this can vary quite a bit depending on exactly what that source is, but we can see that in general, this Z in emitter value is going to be pretty small, and that's going to wind up being in parallel with this biasing resistor, which probably will, again, be considerably larger. If it's not, we're not going to get our gain of 1. So, a rough estimate, ballparky kind of number for the output impedance is really going to be R prime E. Right? Unless you have a considerably large value for your uh, uh, driving source impedance, that's not a bad approximation. Okay? All right, so we see our common collector, also known as emitter follower, or more generically a voltage follower, has a voltage gain of 1. It has a low output impedance and potentially a high input impedance. All right.